So Shang-Chi is a movie that came out and I really want to talk about it. I realize I am a lot later than a usual reviewer would do this kind of thing. But for the last week, I literally haven't had a voice to voice with. So you're getting it now. So I hope you don't mind. By the way, we're going full spoilers. I'm going mentally chronologically through the whole movie. So we're going to be talking about some late game reveals and spoilers. So be aware. Shang-Chi, I've just got to say right up, probably one of my favorite, probably top five Marvel films. I've had a bit of time to think about it and I really think it's one of the best, for me personally at least. I'm a big Marvel fan, I, as, as much as many reviewers are really kind of anti-MCU and I can see the points for the most part, this feels like it's still a little bit of a, a good step ahead of the usual MCU crap, just, just a little bit. But I have seen pretty much every Marvel movie there is, I've, no I think I have seen all of them. I haven't seen some of the TV shows, still need to catch up on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but Seeing this is like, uh, it feels like a sort of similarly impactful movie like Black Panther because it's kind of doing the same kind of thing. It is representing a whole new circle and demographic within the MCU universe and it's just really cool to see done well. So I watched this movie the day it came out I think, maybe the day after. I went with my girlfriend and it's actually the first time we went to a cinema in Brighton since the move so that was quite nice. Uh, she is a massive sort of um, fan of the sort of Asian culture and like Kung Fu and that kind of, all, all that good stuff, you know. She was like super hyped on Power Rangers back as a kid. So she was, she knew a lot more about me on the topic and she was absolutely blown away. And so was I, to be fair. I was pretty blown away by how it all played out well. The first half of this movie's fight scenes are done in Kung Fu. And that's fantastic to see because they do it really, really, really well. I, I can't say this enough. It very much has that sort of, Jackie Chan-esque fight scenes that are going way over the top to do these cool physical stunt performances. I mean, the first two fight scenes absolutely blew me away. The bus sequence that just kept going on and on and on and had all these extra elements coming together was so good. It was like beyond what we had seen up to that point in the MCU. I do think actually some of the later movies have been impressing us with the fight sequences. I think Black Widow was also pretty good on that, but like this was just a whole nother level. And it was so great to see that get the Marvel treatment and translate well into the MCU. Since we're so used to the classic sort of diluted Western style, it was just really, really nice to see. And even coming away from the fight scenes, the characters were great. I loved seeing Shang-Chi as a character. As much as he's not too complex, I really liked the way that he sort of rolled into things. I was hesitant about Aquafina's character because she was just kind of typecasted. But it, it worked. It was, you know, wasn't as Aquafina as she could have been. And to me, that was kind of a positive. It was a nice spin to see. The villain especially was really, really good. They're getting better at empathize, uh, em making you empathize. Empathize? Am I saying that right? They're getting better at making you empathize with the villains. And I really liked his weapon. I, I don't know. I, I'll talk more about that when we actually see more of it. Um, I'm just going through it chronologically in my head. But I really liked how all the characters merged together. The airbending fight scene was also pretty cool. It was kind of goofy with that one shot of them spinning and the guys like looking up all romantically. It was very kind of, I don't know the word, it was cheesy, that's the word. It was very cheesy, but I really liked it. Seeing airbending done well and nicely in live action, kind of cool, because you know, I have no idea about the state of Avatar right now and it's good to get it good somewhere going. <laughs> Did that even make sense? <clears throat> And it's funny because I went to watch through the trailers again recently for another project that I'm working on on the side and um, I, it was kind of easy to piece together. Like there were some late game shots that revealed like the whole story. I, it makes me want to put more effort into deeply analyzing a Marvel movie, like spend like an hour or two on one trailer trying to piece it all together. I just didn't because it's so alien when I watched it. I was like, there's no way I'll be able to piece this together accurately. I feel like that now with the Eternals. Should I take two hours into the Eternal? I probably can't. No, I don't think I can stomach it. But it's just really interesting to see when I watch the trailers again. The Mandarin content that comes in later on as the characters all kind of combine and go to the big world at the end went over my head at first. I didn't see Iron Man 2 or 3, so I guess I didn't see all the Marvel movies. Excuse me. But it wasn't until afterwards I realized, oh, wow, that is, you know, that I learned that he was the actor of the Mandarin. That was really cool to see. He was a, a bit controversial at the start on whether he was worth it because I remember like people laughed at his first scene and then the next scene he's like in a car telling some joke. The cinema, which was pretty full of people, like, it had that sort of rowdy Marvel crowd, they were dead silent for his like first joke. It was like everyone was like, why is he here? 
what is his point? What is he doing? And then he, the joke paid off and it worked and people warmed up to him, but it was such like a, what are you doing here? So I thought that was kind of funny. It's also ironic because you never actually see him directly interact with the villain. So it kind of does feel like he's just kind of crammed in there, but I enjoyed him. He, he told the funny joke. He was a good comic relief, you know? And then at this point in the movie, we turn to the big CG land, which I've heard some people complain about as being a classic Marvel thing, but I had the complete opposite reaction. The second half of the movie is my favorite half because I have the same sort of giddy joy as when I watched Detective Pikachu, seeing these mythological creatures turn into good, high quality CGI was like really, really, I, I don't even know many of the mythological creatures, my girlfriend knew them all, but like it still felt so much more magical than maybe it deserved to, but I really, really enjoyed this like new dimensional village that they end up in. I did find it funny though, it does still have those similarities with Black Panther, that there's two like token white guys that just have to be in the story. You've got your actor Mandarin being the sort of comic relief, I guess Martin Freeman-esque guy, and then your Andy Serkis robot arm guy is translated to machete arm guy. The two white guys, you have, even if you're in Asian dimension and the Asian village, it's very clearly this demographic, you've got to bring two white guys along with you. I don't know if that was like, a, that is actually a, a, a checklist, but I did find the similarity kind of like ironic, coincidental, funny. I don't know, but I, I made a very strong mental note of it. <laughs> but yeah, at this point, we then get to see a lot more. It comes more to the final fight scene where the villain's using his rings a lot more. And I do think they're like my favorite weapon in the MCU. Maybe I'm easily impressed. Like I like Ant-Man and Spider-Man, of course. But like the rings are like, that's a weapon I would as a kid probably be pretending to use because they're like, I don't know, telekinetic and whiply and just, I don't know, they seem like a really fun weapon to play with, you know, more than the ghost spears that the Eternals has or whatever right now. It was kind of frustrating with the whole, there's a big evil gate, you clearly know it's evil and the one villain refuses to accept that it's evil, but like, I kind of didn't mind that too much. Uh, but that was probably like the weakest part of the story for me. But even then, he's a, uh, you know, the villain is, sim is just gonna believe what he wants to believe to believe his wife's on the other end of the gate, I guess. Sure. But that was probably the part I was most like, okay, I get it. Wow, it opened and it's bad? What a surprise. Um, what else pops up in that kind of scene? There's the dragon sequence under the water. When that was first revealed, I was like, this is amazing. It was, it, it really, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just so easily satisfied. It's a great thrill ride amusement park adventure. But like, that was so, Good to see when the dragon reveals itself to Shang-Chi. I really, really enjoyed. Although I did realize, yeah, it's in the trailer. It was one of those late game trailer reveals that I, like, how did I not notice that? That seems like a really big spoiler, but hey, what well, do you know? The one other thing that I do think's kind of like, it kind of, it's the centerpiece of the whole film's plot, really, as much as it's, you know, not good. Uh, Aquafina saves the day with one very lucky arrow that gets right into the big, big bad, right in the throat at the correct time. I feel like it's just a what if episode in the making. What if Aquafina missed with the arrow that saved everything? Considering she started like learning how to use a bow and arrow that day or the day before. Very, very weak deus ex machina in my head, but I mean, that's fine. I do love though how it all connects to Wong and Doctor Strange. It's funny that those two are literally the center of this entire early phase, because like Doctor Strange obviously has Spider-Man and WandaVision. Wong now has uh, Shang-Chi. It just seems so like their own bubble. And then I guess you've also got at the same time Hulk and Captain Marvel. It's just funny how like that's the main central circle right now. Also just the fact that Doctor Strange in the No Way Home trailer is like the scene is like the goofy immature one and Wong's super serious and then we see Wong just goes to karaoke at the end of the film with the final guy so they're, they're both just a couple goof heads it's, it's good fun I, I'm looking forward to Doctor Strange now but yeah uh, as a final other thought sort of thing um, I have a friend who is only just getting into Marvel and we watch like the one of the classic originals foundational ones and then a new modern one and I imagine this will probably be the new next modern one that's kind of in its own bubble you don't think too hard about the Wong stuff, um, that will be absolutely great to just introduce them to, because it's just really, really phenomenal as a movie through and through. I mean, it's got high reviews. I'm another one that's adding to it. I want to see more coverage like this. I want to see more variety in those fight scenes. I want more of that kind of kung fu kind of stunt 
super fight scene action work, which does seem to be a thing that this phase is leaning more towards on the on the fighting front. And as another thing, I want to see. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll see it eventually. I'm looking forward to seeing these sort of slice of life interactions between the superheroes, like because like you know, with Aquafina and Shang Chi being um, valets, chauffeurs. As they, you know, ride other people, or drive other people's cars, I want to see them do, I mean, I don't know what supervillain has a car at this point, because Iron Man's dead, uh, Ant-Man. I want to see a scene of Aquafina joyriding Ant-Man's super van, you know? Like, uh, that just seems like a, a fun mix, or who, I don't know, who goes to the pub? They'll drink with Thor. I don't know, I want to see that kind of, I want to see that kind of goofy, give me another Hulk an Ant-Man and a taco scene. I want that kind of like, ah, I get it, I see the connections fun um but yeah overall big marvel fan really wanted to talk about it even though i'm incredibly late oh well i got my rant in there we'll probably be doing future reviews in this format because i want to do a little bit of something different in the in the seasons and i can actually sort of plan a little bit more all my thoughts on it it was just a really really good film i want marvel to do this more i'm glad that they nailed the asian representation i'm glad that there is now asian representation in the mcu i like that there's now a new sub-dimensional village that we can experience along with like wakanda being its own secret fantasy village and all the other re you know thor's sky world that's actually in norway now but you get the idea i like the expansion of everything i'm a big old marvel schmuck love it all and I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. There you go. There's my rant, ramble, chat about Shang-Chi. Way too late. I hope you enjoyed the movie like I did, because boy, did it give me a great old early joy for moving to Brighton. Just really, really good. Can't wait for Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and all of Eternals as well. God, we are getting spoiled right now, aren't we? Lucky us, I guess. Lucky us.